not see City play first on Sunday. I, is it impossible to to avoid that result? Will you allow the players to watch it? Will, you, you know, how do you, how do you treat it? Because it is <coughs> City first, you second. For sure, before we go on the pitch, we know the results, and everybody will know it because it will spread out like this. Uh, we're going to be watching it, probably not, uh, because we have to focus on, on our preparation. And uh, we've been doing that for the last 10, 15 games. Nothing changed. You keep an eye on, on what is happening, and you have to have information. Uh, but the demand that we put on ourselves is okay, what can we do uh, to control the, the things that we must control? Do you still have a preference at this particular stage of the season who goes first, whether you go first or you go second? Do you prefer to know what, you, what you're going to do? What the you preference is that the result goes your way, the ones that you want, and, and after that, it's, it's very difficult. It sometimes becomes a real motivation, <coughs> sometimes it uh, adds a little bit of pressure, it depends a lot. And, and this, you know, they're, they're at away Everton, it's in between two really hard games. That, I mean, that, that is a major test for them, isn't it? Uh, clearly, you've got your own game, and that's going to be a major test. But it's a test of everyone's mettle at this stage. Yeah, winning every, when you have to win and win and win and win, and we've been like that for the last three months. Uh, it's extremely demanding, especially because the position that that we are facing, and uh, and obviously they have been playing a lot of games as well. <coughs> they've been resolving one way or the other in the right way, and um, and we have to do what we have to. Hi Miguel. Hi. Um, this, this time last year you had quite a few injuries and maybe the squad was a little bit thin then and you couldn't quite get over the line to enter um, the Champions League. Um, does it feel different this time in terms of your capacity to absorb a number of absences? Do you think the squad's got an extra sort of depth and resilience to it? Something that we have to prove right now. Obviously we lost four or five key players last year mm. with five games to go. Um, and we tried our best, but it's true that during the season, as well this season, we have some key key players missing uh, many, many months, and, and we have been able to do that. So that's the demand that we need to have if you want to compete in for championships. Did that period last season maybe help your resilience going in, into this season? Did you learn things from it? For sure, but there are certain things that are unpredictable, and uh, we cannot control certain other things probably that uh, we could have managed better uh, at certain stage. But depends as well on the necessity or, or the momentum of uh, or the performance of each individual is giving you to take less or more risk in in the moment. And um, and now we have to deal with that as well. Uh, Mikael, you might not agree with this, but it seems like since the City game and the dynamic of this title race changed. Your team looks a bit more liberated and sort of free, and I wonder if a you agree with that, and b if the psychological challenge of having something to lose is harder than having something to chase when it's it's twisted like that. I'm sure you can justify there are moments that the team has looked freer in those two games, but the, the way I watched the team play against West Ham for 30 minutes when you have to win, and I said this is flowing and, and became. Almost, yeah, it's too comfortable, and then we gave it away. So um, I don't know. I like what I see from the team right now. I think that the energy is good, the mood is good, the confidence is good, the relationship are back. Uh, players are getting in in the form again, and, and you can sense that even in training. And this is what we need right now. Yeah. I guess. I guess. Is it different when you have it in your own hands compared to when you're then chasing it? I prefer to have it in my own hands, hundred <laughs> percent. And you mentioned just on Brighton and, and Deserby, you mentioned he's brought a, a different idea to the league mm -hmm. for us a lot who aren't tacticians. Can you explain what that is and what he what he does that is different to you and Pep and others? Obviously, especially you're going to highlight the straightaway, um, the capacity they have in, in that first phase of field to, to associate, to play and doing the small spaces, the way they link play, the patterns that they have. But as well, I think it's brought a, a different mentality across and, and you see how they compete, how they went to Wembley and, and the personality that they show at that stage I think is something that I think the manager should take credit of and I think Robert has done that really well. Dan, just a quick one we can. Obviously <coughs> you talked about in the early part of your time at Arsenal you had to be pragmatic with the players you had and, and adapting your philosophy. Regardless of what happens over the next few games, how close does it feel like to being you know, where, where you want to be and where the, 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 your ideas are, are you, are you still having to compromise or do you feel like this team is kind of at, at its pinnacle now in terms of... We're still very far. We can be much, much, much better at a lot of things. In what Huge margins. 
What kind of thing? Anything. We can be much better in our build though. We can be much better attacking man-to-man -man situation. We can be much better attacking open spaces. Defending deep set pieces, we have huge margins to do. In terms of game management, um, a lot of things that we can do are still much better. We can be more ruthless to kill games. It's, it's a lot of things that um, we have to seek for improvement because uh, we don't have a single player that has reached his peak, no one. You know, and when that happens, we as coaches have to be curious to understand what can we do to, to get them better. And then generate those connections that I think we've done pretty well and keep developing them so they empower each other and, and they can take the game to a different level still. And is that, if you're trying to unlock a player's potential, is that as much how you, how, like treating them off the pitch, maybe unlocking them psychologically as well as physically? What? And clicking and, and getting into them and um, and getting something else out of them, you know, and uh, there are certain players as well that they have to go to a different level in terms of the leadership, uh, in terms of what they are able to transmit to the group, and the responsibility, accountability that they have to take for what happens here every single day, the demands, the standards that we want at the club. Uh, it's a lot to do. And have you got ideas that you haven't yet been able to implement because you don't feel like they're ready yet? So does that, does that frustrate you that you can't be the no, manager? No, no, no. At the end, they are the protagonists, and, and we have to try to give them the tools that they know how to manipulate. You know we're going to put them in certain position that they're not going to be comfortable with that. And there are moments to put the, the place in those moments. Now is not the moment to do that, in my opinion. Thank you. Okay. Mikael, you, you, you said here last Friday, in fact, you said a few times that you've never watched the Amazon documentary. And then after the game at Newcastle, you said you used the clip of it to, to motivate the players. So what, what changed? Feeling that I had, I didn't want to watch it, but I put myself and I, I think I needed to watch it. So I put just that part, I think it was uh, a minute and 46 seconds. And I watched that part. So, you, so you deliberately avoided watching the whole thing? Hmm? You've deliberately avoided watching the whole documentary. For this part, yeah, in the summer, I'm going to watch it. Why have you waited so long to watch it? Because I asked certain people that are really relevant in my life to watch it carefully and give me an assessment of what they think. Because I prefer much more their assessment than mine. Because I don't like watching myself on TV in a press conference. I don't like listening to my voice. I don't like that. So probably my judgment is going to be um, not the best for myself. You lost to Brighton last season. I just wondered if you, might you watch a bit of that? <laughs> <laughs> if that's a formula to win, if I have to watch it 50 times, believe me, I will do it. Thank you. Last one, Mark. Just from Kelton, midweek we saw Real Madrid and Man City and the, and the two Milan clubs in the Champions League. When you sort of look at the stand and, and the, the level of that game, are you sort of really excited to be sort of going back into that competition? Yeah, because it's, it's a different level. That's another level. You see the presence of the players. You see the, the charisma. You see how they handle the occasion. It's just magnificent to watch. And when, when you were talking just then about the players need to go to that level, is that the level they need to go to, to, to be able to compete with the, the Real Madrid and the Man City? Sure, if we want to be really in the Champions League, um, representing our club in the right way, <coughs> you have to seek for that level. And there is no secret. If you want to be to that level, you need certain ingredients um, to be there. And what does it mean for the prestige, really, of the club to be back in that competition after whatever it is, six years out? Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, and, and that's the first step. But uh, once that's done, now we have to think about okay, how we're going to be really uh, the club that we want to represent at that stage, which is very different. The man to the Premier League. This is the one competition that Arsenal have obviously never won. Is that mm. the ultimate goal <laughs> to be yes. champions of Europe? That would be incredible to achieve that. Uh, we have to make still a lot of steps in the right direction and, uh, <coughs> together.